So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for willing for us to be, for creating us, our existence, our consciousness, our soul, our being, our ability to witness the miracle of life around us is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We did not need to exist. We did not come into existence by our own being and our own will. Nor is our existence and our presence and our consciousness random. It was willed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He willed for us to be. Walhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. All praise be to Allah who willed for us to be. And greater than the gift of creation is the gift of our faith. Is the gift that we have the opportunity to know the one who created us and created the heavens and the earth and the sun and the moon and the galaxies and everything that is in existence. Allahu Akbar. We can't comprehend how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly is. We can't even comprehend how great and vast the universe is. And it is nothing compared to the greatness of Allah. Rather, it only exists because Allah willed for it to be. La ilaha illahu. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us faith and an opportunity to know Him. And we come to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really through the Quran, through His words. What a gift it is that we can recite the words that were uttered by the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen for that. And Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen that also we have the means of connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Habibullah, through the one that is beloved to Allah. And that is another gift. See, most people, unfortunately, nowadays, they're not recognizing the greatness of the gift of our faith. They're not recognizing that most people out there have been deprived of that gift and how empty life is not to know the one who created us, the one who sustains us, the one who is close to us, the one who is closest to us, the one who is with us, the one who always sees us, always hears us, the one whom we will return to, the one who will take our souls at death, the one who will hold us accountable, the one who has the right to question us about each and every word that we uttered, each and every act that we did, each and every dollar that we earned and that we spent. The one to whom we truly belong to, that our life is not about us, but it's about Him. He is the only necessary existence and we exist only by His will and to serve Him and to seek His pleasure and to find tranquility and happiness through His remembrance and through His uh, nearness. And unfortunately, because many people don't recognize the greatness of the gift of faith, we're willing to give up elements of our faith. We're willing to compromise our beliefs and our values and our practices and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in reaction to the increase in challenges that we face, in reaction to the increase in Islamophobia. My brothers and sisters, what I fear the most is not that we face hardship because we practice our faith. Rather, any hardship and difficulty that we face in worshiping Allah and following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find sweetness through that. We find honor through that, that I know my Lord witnessed my suffering that I faced and my sacrifice and my struggle that I faced out of His love. And He will reward me for that when I meet Him. And really the sacrifice and the struggle we have as Muslims in America is practically insignificant compared to the sacrifice of Muslims throughout the world and compared to the struggles of minorities, other minorities right now that continue to face hardships on account of the color of their skin or where their parents were born or their naturalization papers and what have you. We have it easy, most of us, as American Muslims. And some of us have it increasingly difficult as we face our African American brothers and sisters, for example, face persecution on account of their race and their religion. But the ultimate question is just as people must sacrifice often because of their heritage, because of their race, because of their political opinions, are we willing to sacrifice for our faith? Is Allah worthy of the sacrifice? Is Allah worth it? The question itself is insane. Of course He is worth it. 
But we must ask ourselves that question. And if indeed Allah is worth the sacrifice, and of course He is worth the sacrifice, then why do we often compromise and find ourselves unwilling to sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Some people sacrifice for Allah and some people sacrifice their relationship with Allah. Some people sacrifice for the deen. Some people sacrifice the deen. Who are we? Are we those who sacrifice the deen for worldly pleasures and temporary benefits? Or are we those who sacrifice for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That we make our life a waqaf, a gift for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our life as a means to strengthen our connection with the one who created us and then become a means of connecting people to Allah. That on the day of judgment, when people see Jahannam, they see the hellfire, they see the angels of, of punishment, they see a glimpse of the greatness of Allah, that inshallah behind us will be countless people grateful to us, saying because of you I learned to love Allah and because of you I'm safe on that day. Through Allah's rahmah using you, I am safe today because of you. Or will we be those that are being dragged to hell by those who we were a means of them being misguided. That because of you, I am miserable on that day. See, on the day of judgment, those who are around us will either be grateful to us that we were a means of connecting them to Allah and encouraging their love for Allah, or we were a means of taking them away from Allah. May Allah protect us from being the latter and make us amongst the former. La ilaha illallah, this life is short, my brothers and sisters. Recognize how great it is that we can be connected with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And most people are deprived of that. Most people are deprived of following and being with the one Allah loves. SubhanAllah, how much does Allah love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He loves him so much that he says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ He says, tell, say, O Muhammad, tell the people, if you love Allah, and take a minute when we say Allah, Allah is the one who existed and nothing else existed and then he willed for everything to exist and he had no reference point. When we design an airplane, we didn't design that airplane from nothing, we looked at birds and those were our reference point. Allah created everything without a reference point. He's the originator of all ideas, of all means, of all abilities. Because of him, everything else that is, is. La ilaha illa hu. And he designed the entire world as a test for you to see do you worship your nafs and yourself or do you worship him? And if you des desire to worship Allah and you desire to be with Allah in the dunya, then your reward is in the akhirah. You will be with Allah forever. And what a great meeting that is. That is why death is a gift that you stand before the creator of the heavens and the earth out of love and compassion with him. And yet those in this life who did not seek to be with Allah, who saw everything except Allah, then that's fine. You didn't desire Allah in the dunya, you will not be with Allah in the akhirah. That's the test. Allah will give every person that which they sought. Those who seek Him will be with Him. Those who seek other than Him will be with other than Him. And they are the losers. May Allah make us amongst the successful ones who seek Allah in this life and are blessed with the sight of Allah in the hereafter. La ilaha illahu. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. How great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. May Allah inspire within us the desire to seek nothing but Him. And as I was mentioning, how much does Allah love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Allah sent Rasulullah as a means to, to connect us with Him by following His example. And He said, tell the people, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ If you love Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, if you love Him, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me. And what is the reward for following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It isn't that Allah will give you Jannah because Jannah is nothing compared to this. And Jannah is a sign of this, but it isn't the objective. He doesn't say he'll give you a billion good deeds and a million good... It's all that is insignificant compared to this. In kuntum tuhibboon Allah, if you love Allah, fattabi'uni, follow me. Follow Muhammad and Rasulullah. And if you follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is your reward for following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Yuhbibkumullah. Allah will love you. That's it. That's all you need. That the one who created the sun and the moon and the, and the galaxies and all, all the power that exists within the universe will love you. 
يحببكم الله الله والله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم and he will forgive your sins that is the reward of following Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and yet too many of us when we face Islamophobia when we face discrimination we find ourselves giving up the sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم that is the loss my brothers and sisters the sunnahs are to protect the faraid a person who has is punctual in their sunnahs will not miss the fard and if you miss the sunnah, then you will fall back on the fard. If you value the fara'id, the things that Allah obligated, you will surround it with sunnahs to protect it. And if you value the sunnahs, you will surround it with nawafil to protect it. So God forbid you miss a nafil, you still have your sunnah. You miss a sunnah, you still have your fard. But if all you're doing is the fard, if you miss your fard, you've missed it all. If you're punctual about praying your duhr sunnah, you're not going to miss the lot of duhr. If you're punctual in the outward sunnahs, appearing as a Muslim, then you're not going to be willing to hide your Muslim identity and lose the fard, which is the aqidah, the belief in the deen. But the biggest tragedy when it comes to Islamophobia, my brothers and sisters, is that too many of us, in the face of Islamophobia, we are sometimes willing to sacrifice the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, forgetting that Really, this connection with Rasulullah is a gift from Allah and Allah did not give this gift to most people. And the faith that we have is the greatest gift from Allah. And if you appreciate this gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would never give it up. No Islamophobia, no discrimination, no challenge would ever push you to give up your deen and your connection to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when we follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find all the doors of khair opening up. A man, I won't mention the full hadith, but the summary of the hadith was that he committed his full free time to send salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if that is what you do, then إِذَا tukfa hammak wa yukhfar dhambak. That if you spend most of your free time or your free time sending salam upon me, strengthening your connection with me. Because it's not just about saying Allahumma salli alayhi wa it's about building the love. And it isn't just about building the love because if you're truly in love, you will emulate. And when you emulate, you become a means of mercy in this world, a means of mercy to the creation of Allah. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood for the poor, so you stand for the poor. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood for his family members and took care of his family, you will take care of your wife and your children. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam challenged oppression and injustice, you will challenge oppression and Justice, you become an embodiment of mercy that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was for humanity. So when the Sahabi said, I will commit my free time descending salam upon you, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, What is the reward of that? Then tukfa hammak wa yughfar dhambak. In that case, all of your worldly worries will be taken care of by Allah. You will be a king in the dunya. You will have no worries. What is it that makes the dunya difficult is our worries. Well, even took fahammak. Salam upon the Prophet will be a means of Allah taking care of all of your worries. And who of us doesn't have worries that need to be relieved? وَيُغْفَرْ ذَنْبَكْ And your sins will be forgiven. And in the akhirah you will be in Jannah. You will be forgiven. You will be with Allah. You will be with me. What more do we need? Our worries of the dunya taken care of and our sins which are the worries of the akhirah taken care of. Through salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa my, my brothers and sisters, we have to value that connection with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa We have to value our faith. We have to value the Quran. We have to value our iman. If we do, we would not give up our faith when we face challenges. And in fact, we would make it a priority that our life, we strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and help connect others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the ultimate question is, are we willing to sacrifice for the deen? And what does sacrificing for the deen in America mean? What does it look like? It means holding on to our Muslim identity. It means not letting discrimination or hate crimes push us away from expressing our Muslim identity. And then most importantly, it means setting aside from our time and our wealth and our energy to serve the deen of Allah, to inspire within others around us and within ourselves, first and foremost, love of Allah and His Messenger that my brothers and sisters, we're all gonna to return to our Creator. Do we know our Creator? And how can we know our Creator except through the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So we spend time connecting people with the Prophet Sallallahu after we ourselves have fallen in love with him and built that connection with him. Whoever spends this life connecting with Allah is, is victorious. And whoever spends their life connecting with other than Allah has lost. This is why, you know, as believers, we're often taught to say the kalima, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Of the greatest forms of ibadah is to repeat the kalim of La ilaha illallah. And subhanAllah, if you look at our deen, much of what's in our deen also has a practical benefit because you think about it. The one who says La ilaha illallah is saying nothing is worthy of worship except Allah. 
I'm not worshiping my wealth, my position, my reputation. In fact, I'm not entitled to anything. I may lose my wealth, my family, my friends, my health, my body. I can lose it all, but none of that is my creator. None of that is my God. None of that is that which I seek. There is no God except Allah. La ilaha illallah. So at the time of death, the believer, his whole life, he's been saying la ilaha illallah. She's been saying la ilaha illallah. So at the time of death, they realize they're leaving everything around them and they're returning to Allah. The one whom they've been saying is their God and nothing else is their God. So death becomes easy because you're going to him who you were seeking your whole life. You're going to him who you've been worshiping and desiring and wanting and loving your whole life. Therefore, death becomes easy. The soul just wants to flow out. The Prophet ﷺ described that it flows out like water flows from a jug. It wants to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for the one who was not frequent in saying la ilaha illallah, who did not truly believe in la ilaha illallah, who did not express la ilaha illallah, well, their whole life they've spent worshiping everything around them. They worship their position. They worship their wealth, their family, their friends, whatever it is. It is material goods that they have. So when they're dying, they're leaving everything that they worshipped. And they're going to one that they don't know. So then they cling on to everything around them and it becomes very difficult for the soul to leave the body. May Allah make death truly a gift for us and a, the most joyous occasion of our existence that we are being reunited with our Creator and that we've adequately prepared for that day. If we keep all of our wealth back in our bank account, we're not going to want to go to the Akhirah because our wealth is here. What are we going to have there? But those who spent most of their wealth already in the Akhirah, they're like, yeah, let me follow my wealth. It's waiting for me. And I invested it. That is the best investment. The dollar you spend in the path of Allah, Allah grows it and grows it and grows it such that you find mountains of good deeds there. And the wealth that you hold back, especially if you did not pay your zakat, will be a source of regret. And it doesn't grow. In fact, you will be questioned about it. A believer will never on the day of judgment regret a dollar they spent sincerely for the sake of Allah. The only regret they will have is for the dollar they did not spend for the sake of Allah and for the time they did not spend for the remembrance of Allah. When you see the reward of remembering Allah, the only regret you will have is for the time you did not spend in His remembrance. Because when you are remembering Him, you are with Him. Although you may not see it, some people, they can feel it. La ilaha illallah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. But the question again goes back, are you willing to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And we must learn from Bani Israel. The problem with Bani Israel, and this is just a lesson for us, is that they really were not willing to sacrifice for Allah. And they saw sacrificing for Allah as a negative thing, not as an honorable thing. Because of the lack of their love. Because of the lack of their dhikr, which is what I want to end this khutbah talking about, the importance of dhikr, remembrance of Allah, which facilitates every good thing. So, the story we've mentioned many times when Musa alayhi salam, and remember he was struggling against the political power of his time. He was speaking truth to power. He was fighting for freedom and for justice. When he challenged Musa, uh, Fir'aun and Musa alayhi salam escaped with his people, liberated his people, and they reached the sea, and they saw the army behind them. We know what they said. We've spoken about them. This they said, Inna lamudrakun, we are destroyed. That was the response. Now, what would have been the worst possible outcome from a materialistic perspective that would have happened to Bani Israel? The seas in front of them and the armies behind them. The worst thing that would have happened is Pharaoh would have caught them and slaughtered them. That's the truth. But is that destruction for the believer? To lose your life in the path of Allah, defending justice and defending truth and defending His Messenger. Is that destruction or is that victory? No, to lose your life challenging oppression is victory. So had their faith been stronger, they wouldn't have said, Inna mudrakun. We're destroyed. They would have said, Inna lafaizun. We are victorious because death is in front of us. Death in the path of Allah, serving the Creator of the heavens and the earth as an oppressed people standing for justice. But their faith was lacking. On the other hand, look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. The Sahaba, when they stood for truth and they stood for justice and they challenged oppression, and one of the Sahaba was in a battle defending the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he was disarmed, and the, the person who at the time was a mushrik was about to kill him. What was that Sahabi's last word? Was it, Inna la mudrakun, I'm destroyed? No, la Allah. It was the opposite. He said, Fistu wa Rabbul Kaaba. I swear by the Lord of the Kaaba, I am victorious. As he was meaning death. 
but he said I was victorious because I spent my life to the last second with faith, serving the deen, standing for truth against the, uh, against the oppressors, standing for the oppressed, bearing witness to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving my life for the sake of Allah and in service to his deen and in service to his creation. They were willing to sacrifice. Many Israel wasn't willing to sacrifice. Are we willing to sacrifice for Allah? Is Allah worth, worth it? Of course he is. So ask yourself, what are you sacrificing for the deen of Allah? What are we putting forward? Dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the key to being successful in all of this. See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers as remembering Allah abundantly. And that's what he commands the believers. Remember Allah abundantly. Because if you remember Allah abundantly, not just from the spiritual perspective, the spiritual perspective has many secrets which we don't have time to go into, but even from a rational perspective, the one who rationally remembers his, his creator abundantly will start to see some of his greatness. And when you start to see from the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everywhere around you, and you recognize that everything in my life is a test to get me closer to Allah. And I swear to you, my brothers and sisters, everything you face in life, everything fitna, every controversy, every challenge, every difficulty, if you look at it as a way to get you closer to Allah, it will get you close to Allah. Even your sins, if you look at them as a means for getting close to Allah, they will get you closer to Allah. For verily the tears of the sinner are more beloved to Allah than the arrogance of those who do good. Everything can get you close to Allah. You see your brother going through difficulty, you pray for him and you thank Allah you're not in his shoes. That gets you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do good and you're grateful, alhamdulillah, brings you close. You, you face difficulty and you're patient, alhamdulillah, that brings you close. Everything can bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the believer, because they remember Allah abundantly, they start to see the greatness of Allah always. And they start seeing everything as connecting them with Allah. So therefore, they start to have sincerity because they realize Allah is so great. It isn't worth it for me to do any good deed for other than the pleasure of Allah. It's not worth it for me to do good deed to please people because people will die, Allah never dies. It's not worth it for me to do good so people like me because they will die and who cares whether they like me or not. Their opinions change by the moment. What cares is does Allah like me because he's so great, he's with me, he's close to me. So you start to have sincerity. And you, you're not willing to compromise your deen because you realize Allah is so great, it isn't worth it for me to sacrifice my deen because I'm afraid of somebody or because I want to please somebody. You don't fear anyone more than you fear Allah. You don't love anyone more than you love Allah because you remember Allah abundantly. So that keeps you steadfast and gives you strength and gives you courage and keeps you on the straight path and gives you most importantly sincerity. But the people who do not remember Allah abundantly, they forget how great Allah is. They forget that He created everything. They forget that He is with us at all times, that He sees us, that He created us, that He sustains us, that we will return to Him. And because they forget how great He is, then they start to do things for other than the sake of Allah. They start to do things for fame, for fortune, for people to, to respect them. Uh, they start to stay away from the deen because they're afraid people will attack them, people will hurt them. That's what happens when you don't remember Allah a lot. So we have to increase in our dhikr to remain steadfast in everything that we do. And we put our trust in Allah first and foremost, and then we find strength through each other. He's the one who helped you through his victory, and then with the believers. Even Allah told Rasulullah Allah, Allah is enough for you. And whoever follows you from the believers. We need to be a source of strength for each other, that we connect with Allah and connect each other with Allah. We overlook each other's faults. We don't get involved in that which doesn't concern us. From the beauty of Islam, is, uh, one's Islam is that they don't get involved and they don't gossip in things that don't involve them. Some people go to hell because of their bad deeds, but other people go to hell because they speak about people's bad deeds. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is all to build social cohesion, he said to Engage in backbiting is worse than committing zina. Zina is a sin, but to backbite about somebody, it's a greater sin. Leave that which doesn't concern you and just busy yourself connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember that our strength and our victory in this life and the next is only through the help of Allah. I was, very quickly, I know our time is up, was in court last week because we were being sued by an Islamophobe. He had no case. It was, we saw victory right before our eyes. You know, he was suing us because we reported him because he threatened to burn down some masajid and then he sued us for defamation and the judge is getting angry with him. It's clear it's a ridiculous, frivolous case. And I thought to myself, for sure we're going to win. But Alhamdulillah, then I caught myself and I said, Astaghfirullah, may Allah forgive me. For a second, I put my trust and my confidence in our abilities and in our case and in our resources, not in Allah. May Allah forgive me. That was a form of dhulm. 
And Allah describes it as Sahaba wa yawma Hunayn on the day of Hunayn when you were proud of your resources, but it didn't help you. Woman nasru illa min indillah. Victory is only from Allah. It doesn't matter how much or how little resources we have. We are commanded to put together the best resources and the best strength, but our trust is only in Allah, not in what we do. That's the love, that's the tawakkul, that's the yaqeen, that's the true tawheed. And even Allah, when He describes the believers and the challenges they faced, He said, you know, I will send thousands of angels to support you. But then He continues, Allah says, I will give you thousands of angels to help you in your battle. But remember, I only did this as good news, and so your hearts find tranquility. However, the victory is not through the angels, and it isn't through your weapons, and it isn't through your abilities. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Victory is only from Allah. We need to be a God-conscious people. People who seek nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who stay away from every conversation that distracts us from Allah, and who busy ourselves seeking our Creator, and then putting forth our wealth, and our resources, and our energy to strengthen our connection with Allah, and to connect others with Allah and to defend the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us amongst those who remember him abundantly and who love his messenger and who follow the sunnahs of his messenger and who revive the sunnahs of his messenger and who recite Allah's holy words frequently and remember Allah tremendously that we love none other than Allah, we seek none other than Allah and we stay away from all that which doesn't concern us. We stay away from gossip and backbiting and talking about things we have no knowledge of and just keep our focus in seeking the pleasure of Allah. Allah is so great that if you love Him, nothing can make you lose your faith and trust in Him. La ilaha illahu. May Allah make us of His lovers and those who connect others to love Him. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد رسوله يا أيها المسلمون اتقوا الله واذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أدب الله من شطار الجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قال لا إله إلا الله دخل الجنة فيا أيها المسلمون اتقوا الله واستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد رسوله يا أيها المسلمون اتقوا الله واذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وفرج عن إخوان المطلوبين وانصرهم يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار هم نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر المستعان من نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان عليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها النبي لم تحرم ما أحل الله لك تبتغي مرضاة أزواجك والله غفور رحيم قد فرض الله لكم تحلة أيمانكم والله مولاكم وهو العليم الحكيم وإذ أسر النبي إلى بعض أزواجه حديثا فلما نبأت به وأظهره الله عليه عرف بعضه وأعرض عن بعض فلما نبأها به قالت من أنبأك هذا قال نبأني العليم الخبير إن تتوبا إلى الله فقد صغت قلوبكما وإن تظاهرا عليه فإن الله هو مولاه وجبريل وجبريل وصالح المؤمنين والملائكة بعد ذلك ظهير عسى ربه إن طلقكن أن يبدله أزواجا خيرا منكن مسلمات مسلمات مؤمنات قانتات تائبات عابدات سائحات سائحات ثيبات وأبكارا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقوضها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاظ شداد لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون يا أيها الذين كفروا لا تعتذروا اليوم إنما تجزون ما كنتم تعملون يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة نصوحا عسى ربكم أن يكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويدخلكم جنات ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار يوم لا يخزي الله النبي والذين آمنوا معه نورهم يسعى بين أيديهم وبأيمانهم يقولون ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا إنك على كل شيء قدير الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر
Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, if I can have your attention for a couple minutes. You know, it's a big challenge to be responsible for running the organization that's job is to defend the Muslim community under the Trump administration. It's been a very challenging year. Alhamdulillah, we've had a lot of victories and a lot of opportunities uh, for growth. And I'm very excited that actually today, please stop by and meet the care team. We have our regional director, uh, Sister Rasha Mubarak, uh, our regional coordinator also, Sister Begum, and two Care Florida attorneys, one of whom is working full time. Care Florida actually, thanks to your support now, has a full-time lawyer working locally uh, along with the five other lawyers that we have throughout the state to defend you and your community in case anybody faces discrimination or harassment or abuse whether at schools or from the government from FBI CBP hate crimes businesses you name it really the gist of what we do is about making Muslims feel safe that's our goal to make Muslims feel safe to practice their faith in these challenging times while defending other people last year we got about 1200 calls for help we did about 600 cases for the community and 20 percent of the people we helped were not Muslims we need to continue to grow to expand our ability to defend our faith in our community We hired additional lawyers this year We need to hire more lawyers next year because the attacks against the Muslim community are not getting any less We also need to advance our advocacy department so we can work to proactively challenge anti-Muslim laws Anti-Muslim CBP policies at the end of the day care is the organization responsible for defending our faith in these challenging times We pray to Allah at night, but we work for victory during the day and we can't do it without both. So I am inviting all of you, next Saturday is our annual banquet. You, you never see me fundraising here, maybe once a year, twice a year if that. Really our fundraising is at our annual banquet, which is this Saturday, uh, uh, next Saturday, coming Saturday, October 21st, inshallah. You can stop by the table, meet the care team, buy tickets. If you can't come, then maybe uh, take an envelope to uh, send your support in, or go to our website, careflorida.org, to check out our banquet. And I invite you all to join us at our annual banquet. This annual banquet is the one opportunity we have to raise the funds we need uh, to order in order to have the lawyers and the media professionals and the government affairs experts on the ground defending our faith in these challenging times. We can't do it without your support, so I encourage you all to join us. We'll have Sister Linda Sarsour and some other great speakers at the annual banquet next Saturday, October 21st, inshallah, here in Orlando. Please buy your tickets and you can come and visit the office, see the amazing team we have committed to defending your faith. And if you face discrimination or anybody you know faces discrimination, send them to us. We're here to defend you and, and represent you, inshallah. So so please swing by the care table and I hope that you will send your support. You know if care, if you need help, you can contact us, we'll be here for you. But now we're asking you for your help. Join us at our banquet next Saturday. Uh, information at the table, inshallah. And also tomorrow, uh, there is a training for sisters in self-defense. You can get the information at the care table as well. I encourage the sisters to come to that. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, um, Next Friday, inshallah, Imam Wissam Sharif will be visiting uh, AMCC, so he's going to be doing the khutbas. And there's an evening program on supplications that he'll be doing, Quranic supplication. I urge all of you and request to come. It's going to be inshallah after Isha. And mark your calendar for November the 3rd. We were able to uh, secure the screening of the very good interfaith movie, Sultan and the Saint, here at the... Um, uh, our AMCC uh, multi-purpose hall. So I want you to come. Please go back, go to the uh, website, Eventbrite, print the ticket, and also invite your non-Muslim friends, colleagues, neighbors, whoever you can. That's a great Dawa event, and I want you all to uh, take advantage of it and spread the good word. It's a peacemaking process, um, which uh, a Muslim king, 
and a saint did together centuries ago. It's an example in today's day. So I want you to just spread the message, come uh, to the movie and bring your friends along with inshallah, non-Muslim friends especially. Um, we are also doing a talent show on the 27th, uh, the Peace Academy, the Muslim uh, Sunday School that we do here. The kids are doing a talent show. Uh, they will be portraying and, and doing a presentation on great Muslim inventors. So I want all of you to come and, and watch our kids doing that and it's going to be a potluck dinner too on that day inshallah. So we'll, these are the events, please keep in mind and we'll see you soon inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.